Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today we have an amazing, fantastic, mystifying game brought to you by Overworld Games called Barker's Row. In this game you'll be constructing and manifesting oddities and interesting persons to try and get rubes to join your attractions. However, other people such as your opponents or other rivaling carny folk are going to attempt to take the rubes into their grandstands instead. You need to make sure that that doesn't happen. The first to fill up their nice uh, auditorium of people is going to be the first person to acquire their victory. It basically means that they're the strongest and most powerful carny folk of them all. Are you all ready to dive in and check out Overworld Games, Barker's Row, the interesting, mystifying, and indifferent carny game? Let's go look at it. Prepare to enter the mystifying and interesting world of Barker's Row. As you can see, tons of 3D props presented you by rubes and other horrors, beasts, and oddities are going to be involved in this game. Now, if we look at the Barker's Row tracker here, this is going to represent not only a 3D spectacle, but also the points that you can gain throughout the game and how uh, more difficult it's going to be to uh, att put attractions out on your side of the field or in your uh, carnival, as they may say, or even your freak show. Uh, this plays up to four players, and we're going to be using just a three to show you a basic idea of the game, but everybody is going to be getting three attraction cards. Now, as you can see, attraction cards look like this and represent different types of oddities and interests that you can put into your carnival. Now, after everybody's gotten their three cards, they're also going to have this deck of cards, this deck of spectacles here. There's going to be dozens of different types. There's even wilds in here, horrors, beasts, and oddities. Now, what you're going to want to do is on your turn select any of these cards here and place it face up in front of everyone. Now why do you want to do that? Well simply because you're going to want to play these cards and the cost to play them is going to be to actually, uh, if you look at this board here, the cost is going to be based on where your point tracker is. So right now it costs four to play any of the type of cards in your hand. So he's going to want to play the three-headed shark. Now he's going to need on his start of his turn to flip over one of these cards. You can choose the horror or you can choose the one on the Barker's Row. When he flips one over, it's going to represent a number as well as a type, purple and three. Now he needs four, and it shows his little green marker here, so he's not going to be able to use that to get his card out, unfortunately, or his attraction. So he's simply going to place another one of these down and end his turn. These are communal cards, which means anybody in the shows can use them, provided that they are able to. So now we have your turn, and you also need a purple. So flipping over a purple like that is going to do it for you. That will give you five, because they're both of the same type, and if you'd like, you can go ahead and play the man-eating plant. Simply by making these cards disappear, you will be able to use this card. Now, when you do that, you're going to move your point tracker up on this board from four in order to go to five, and that means that you're going to need five points on the board in order to use the next card you want to put it into play, depend no, no matter the type of card. Man-eating plant. So what you're going to do when you put this card to play is say, the mystifying, the majestic, the horrifying man-eating plant. Watch its anger grow. Uh, and of course, it has an ability. Now, when you put a card out into play, your attraction, you can put it in front however you'd like to do so, and you can leave it there until you want to use it. Also, when you play a card, you're always going to take two rubes and put them into your stands. Your objective is to fill up your entire stand before anyone else does. And it says every time you move this, this piece up on the board, you're going to score two points. You can also score rubes by different cards that you're going to be playing throughout the game. Well, this one here says play three cards from Barker's deck into the midway for each level you are behind uh, the leader on the, the strongman tower. This is the strongman tower. So if the leader was at eight and you were at five, he would be three. So you get to play out uh, three cards in the Barker's deck in the midway for each level. So three, six, and nine cards out. That can give you the potential to play cards from your hand to catch up. There's a lot of catch up mechanics in the game. Now this card will stay here until you want to use it, and when you use it, you're simply going to put it behind you so that people know that it's not being used. Now, of course, uh, I'm showing you the board here, so this is technically behind, and this is technically in front, so I'll put it right there, but in general, when you want to get rid of it, you're just going to hide it over here, and of course, on the back of these little towers, these little um, stands here are going to tell you the turn as well as the scoring of an attraction. The next player is going to get to go, and it's going to continue along this, the, the lines of this, so he played that card up there because he happens to have two greens, Claude the, uh, Claude the Claude, and and sword swallower. 
and um, then he's going to be done. He doesn't have anything else in play. The next player is going to choose, and of course he doesn't need green, so he's going to go for maybe yellow. He'll flip that over, put another one out, and that's going to be two and two. Still not enough. You would go ahead and pick one, and of course yellow would be a good option for you. That's five, and that would do it again for you. You're doing very, very well, and you're going to move up the track here. Then you're going to get two more rubes to put into your stands. You're going to be able to play the all-seeing eye. Oh, also don't forget, whenever you play a card, you get to draw a new one from the deck, and if you ever have three of the same type, you're simply going to get rid of them if you want to, and draw three new ones. Then you're going to play the all-seeing eye. This one specifically says, uh, play all three cards from the Barker's Row into the midway. Oh, that's pretty useful. We'll go ahead and save that for later, though. And then you go to get another attraction. Just put it into your hand. And, of course, you're now one step closer to victory. Oh, actually, you go up one more here. There we go. Uh, that will get you the six. So now it's going to cost you six next time. So hopefully people are going to be able to start catching up. And of course, these are going to go into the discard pile and this will be left alone to stay there. And, um, and then, oh, look, a wild. This player is going to go for the wild. Flip it over. It's a one. Most wilds going to be ones. Some of them will be twos. However, probably a better play instead of him doing that would be to take the freaks. Oh, bam, there's a five for him. And in which case he'd be able to play an attraction and he'd go up the board and he would collect rubes and so on and so forth. And that's the basic idea of the game. Whoever gets to the top, whoever gets all the rubes filled up in their stands is going to win the game. While using their attractions, you can either choose to play an attraction, then draw, or draw and play an attraction. Whenever you play the attraction, it's going to go into your discard pile, so be aware of that. That's the basic idea of Barker's Row, the carnival game. Let's talk about it. A short caveat before we begin my review, uh, there are wild cards with plus symbols on them, and when you draw one of those, you simply put out another card uh, to signify, because every time you get a plus, you just get to put another one out. Usually they're ones. Uh, so we'll increase the amount of cards in the in the area which you guys can take from. Uh, the Barker's Row is basically there to give you more variety of choice in the different types of categories of cards you might have in your hand. And also don't forget, if you happen to have three attractions of the same color, if you start with it or at any point, you can actually go ahead and get rid of them and get new ones so you can have a variety of cards in your hand. It'll help you progress throughout the game. Now what to say about Barker's Row? The first thing I think is obviously it looks gorgeous. You can tell it has the great 3D stuff. You, it takes a little small assembly required but fairly simple to put down um, it has a good range of time for the type of game it is it's pretty simple as far as it goes the most strategy involved in the game is actually not in putting out these guys or putting rubes onto your tower like you'd normally assume the strategy is what types of cards you play and when you play them and how you use them when they're on the board they do different things one lets you draw five cards from the deck and choose two to play in the midway and discard three of the three others uh once return a rube to the crowd and play five cards in the midway from the barker deck and or barker's row so you can start playing more cards you can start putting out more of the um more more rubes under your stack a lot of these guys will give you rubes but won't give you the benefit of being able to put more cards out uh, the wilds can be useful but they're lower and you have to be careful of what card you take and what card you put away based on what you think your opponents are going for because you're going to know what they're going to want they start pulling green and purple that means they're going for green and purple do you necessarily want to put a green and purple out if you know you're not going to be able to put a card out because as this track here this barker's road track this little strongman tower if you go up to eight it's very very unlikely you're going to hit nine before your opponents get up to like seven and the reason why is because you're going to need a nine of yellows uh in order to, to or you know an eight of yellows in order to get to that nine area or an eight of purple whatever colors you have in your hand everybody else is only going to need the lower end total so there's a huge huge catch-up mechanic in the game it's specifically good for people who don't like playing a game that they think they're going to be dead last in it does tons of little catch-up aspects to this game that kind of give you a benefit uh, to make sure that you're not always like super far behind so it's always going to be a close game the attractions are wonderful the art is wonderful i really like this carny style game it reminds me of uh, the greatest showman a little bit but a little darker i suppose uh, it's got some beautiful little meeples here there's tons and tons of them this good chunk of art i think there's like 15 different types of meeples in this game and all the attractions do different things there's nothing there's no two alike so that's really cool as well it's a simple game it takes maybe a half an hour and it's a pretty quick one to teach quick quick one to play overall barker's row is very very good i really do enjoy it i'm happy i got to review it i think this is uh one of those type of games that you've uh, it's got little mechanics from a bunch of little games, and they put them all together along with a great theme. Barker's Row, excellent overworld games. I definitely suggest you check it out if it sounds like something you're interested in, especially if you like the theme of the type of uh, carny slash freak show aspect that it's got going on here. Now, anyway, check it out. That's all I got.